Wow is an activity of flying the kite in the air. The word wow is said to come from the word Malay government of Patani, Thailand, given that states like Kelantan, Terengganu, Perlis and Kedah use the word. In addition, the word wow is used in most states such as on the coast west and south of peninsular Malaysia such as Selangor, Malacca and Johor. It can evidence by Tun Sri Lanang note stating that Raja Ahmad playing kite with the young men and the royal family and kite games are held as entertainment for various ages and it also held for competitions and the competition's winner will be measured in terms of the beauty to the shape, the pattern of creation, the color, the authenticity of the creation and its size. According to Wayne Hosking in his book, which entitled Kites of Malaysia, it says wow come from the Dutch word that is referred to a large bird found in Southeast Asia. However, the latest facts were found, the result of interviews with wow activists, Peninsular Malaysia suggests that the word wow comes from a sound produced by the bow found on the kite. Samad Benman, or better known as Pak Non, was born on 18 May 1946 in Kampung Tok Kaya, Kayang Perlis. Pak Non started learning how to make wow and decorative wow since 1963 and inherited the skills of making wow from his grandfather named Isha Bendin. Pak Non's achievement in the art of wow making and sculpture have taken him to travel throughout Malaysia and even abroad. Among his achievements are winning the International Wow Competition at the Pertandingan Pesta Layang Layang Pasir Gudang, Johor in 1997 and winning three years in a row also a wow competition in Satun, Thailand in 2001-2003. to Other than that, Pak Non also performed the Wow Malaysia in Bali International Wow Competition, Indonesia in 1999. Other than that, Pak Non also have made several demonstrations including World Expo 2010 in Shanghai, China and Malaysia with London in 2003. Besides that, Pak Non efforts in upholding arts and culture have been recognized by the Perli State Government with the awarding of the Pingat Jasa Kebaktian in conjunction with the birthday of Duli Yang Maha Mulia, Tuanku Raja Perlis on 17 May 2014. Pak Nun also recognized as the Penerima Anugerah Tukang Ulung Craft by Perbadanan Craft Tangan Malaysia in 2014 and the Anugerah Layang Layang Angkasa by Tuanku Mahkota Johor Tuanku Ismail Sultan Ibrahim in the conjunctions with the Pesta Layang Layang Antarabangsa in 2015. Besides that, Wan Anwar Wan Shafi, also one of the most popular master craftsmen of Wow in Malaysia. Wan Anwar is the son of the legendary kite maker, the maker of Wow Bulan, who is popularly known as Pak Shafi from Kelantan. Wan Anwar has been running the WOW Gallery since it was constructed by his father over a year ago and he has never stopped leading visitors through these long-forgotten traditions. Additionally, the gallery which first started its operations in the 1980s is well known not just in Malaysia but also internationally. Pak Sapi and Sons Gallery is located on Jalan Pantai Cahaya Bulan, Kota Baru, Kelantan. Aside from that, this gallery has a variety of kite collections dating from Pak Shafi time to the present. Among the numerous collections are Wau Bulan, Wau Puyo, Wau Jelabudi, Wau Kuching and Wau Sobek. There's also must be some wow that exists with names that people have never heard of before. According to Wan Anwar and his father Pak Shafi, they believe that each wow is not only a unique piece of art, but it is also a reflection and representations of the heart of the maker which may demonstrate 
his subtle mastery of the artistic work. Other than that, the late of Haji Wansu bin Wan Othman, also one of the most popular master craftsmen of WOW in Malaysia. The late of Haji Wansu bin Othman, also known as Pak Su, is a native of Cik City Wang Kembang, which is Kelantan. He was born in 1900 in Pengkalan Kubo, Tumpat, Kelantan, a mukim that sit on the border of Kelantan and Thailand. After that, he moved to Besut at the age of 25 to send his children to school. Initially, he started made the replica of Yat, Wayang Kulit and Wow as a hobby. His work was well received by art enthusiasts and he frequently won competition in which he competed. In 1965, he established the Wansu Carving Art Workshop in Kampung Alor Lintang. The late Wansu Bin Wan Othman is Malaysia's most skilled carver. He has the ability to carve and making some of wow since he was 9 years old. For the next craftsman of wow is Mazlan Jaafar. Mazlan Jaafar, or his full name is Mazlan bin Jaafar, has been involved in making wow for 30 years. Besides from bringing a player of wow, he is also a maker of wow that is still active till today. Mazlan Jaafar is 60 years old this year and he is from Batu Buruk, Kuala Terengganu. Many places that Mazlan Jaafar have explored with his skills in making wow, including he involved in seven Escope conference exhibitions in 2001 as craftsman exhibitor, and also involved in exhibition of craft Nusantara in 2007 as demonstrator. Because of his deep interest in wow sobek, he developed the knowledge of producing wow sobek as a career until now. Furthermore, Hashim bin Awang. Hashim bin Awang is one of the craftsmen that is originally from Kota Baru, Kelantan. He started his journey in making wow since he is a child. Hashim bin Awang has won decorative wow competition for three years in a row. His work became a decoration at the Malaysian Commission Building in London. Next is Historical Background of Wow The Kites Game, also known as Wow, is an activity played in the windy area. Wow is unique design Malaysian kite that have been flying for centuries. The word of Wow is come from the shape of its wing, which resembles an Arabic letter, which pronounced Wow. Wow is the games that are contains many elements of authentic Malay culture. It can be seen through the pattern and design that are available on the wow. The game of kites or wow has existed in the past 3000 years ago in the country of China in Malaya, especially in the Malay culture. The game of wow became known during the reign of Sultan Mahmud Shah. About 500 years ago, he was the last sultan in the Kesultanan Melayu Melaka. During that time, Wow was one of the popular games compared to Sepak Tako. The purpose of people in Kelantan playing Wow is to relieve fatigue after working under the rice field for several months. Whereas in China, in ancient times, kites were used to fly their food for people trapped in the hills or mountains during time of flood. Although there were many use for wild kings in the past, but in the era of modern times, wild are being used as a game and entertainment purpose only. In the other hand, the validity dates and origins of the wild kings in Malaysia are unknown. Besides that, according to historian Cliff Hart, the kite in Malaysia comes from China. This is due to the designs and character resembles the traditional Chinese kite. Next is Mythos. The myths of the wow started with according to one story, where the wow was originally an anonymous king. 
the game was played by the children where it is made of by certain leaf that are tied to the spine of the leaf with the rope of banana steam petals or pineapple leaf winds. Wow is play at a windy place. However, once upon a time, the nameless games that have been played by the children broke its strings and makes the children cry. Due to that situation, the name of Wow was born according to the sound of cry that has been made by that children. Besides that, other story also mentioned that the meat of the Wow Kim is associated with the meat of Semangat Padi, which originates from the north of Peninsula Malaysia, namely in the state of Kedah. It is said that there is a couple in the state who work as a farmer at the foot of a hill by planting paddy. While they were planting paddy, they found a baby girl and they decided to took care of the baby until adulthood. Because of her husband feel grateful and love his daughter too much, he always brought food to the place where his daughter play, which is in the paddy field. Her husband action have caused his wife to feel very jealous. Her daughter treats his daughter out of jealousy until she fled in the directions of the westerly one. As a consequence, the baby that have been works that year did not grow up in a proper way and were attacked by disease. According to Tok Nujum mentioned that their daughter was actually Semangat Padi and advised the farmer as a sign of apology they were required to make a mystery identity as a wow bulan and be flown using a rami rope. The purpose of the wow in the previous society can be built through its function in the Malay community and also in the world community. In the Malay community, if we look back at the old history of the wow, it's associated with the myth of the spirit of Paddy for the ancient Malay community. In the past, wow is a spirit and are often played after the rice harvest. Wow also serve as a guardian of Paddy fields for the previous Malay community. In addition, WOW also serve as a game or event for the official game of the king and the courtiers in the days of the Malay community. Every year, the place will hold a WOW festival which allows the king's son and the people to participate in these WOW competitions. WOW also could be as a leisure and recreational activity in Malay society during the past. Due to the limited communications, the Malay community in the past used their free time with games such as these WOW competitions. The WOW traditional game in the earlier Malay society also may function as a folk cultural art, as WOW is used to mean the beauty of the Malay community practices. The purpose of WOW in the previous society also could be as a tool of war and a symbol of a country's success. During the past, WOW is used as a map of a country attack and reasoning. During the presence, there are also various functions that exist, either to introduce the WOW to the outside community, or to function as something we never thought of during this present. Firstly, nowadays many WOW competitions are organized for the purpose of introducing WOW internationally, and those who are involved in this competition will be obtained the sentimental value of this traditional game. Apart from that, WOW is mainly served as an exhibition material. Almost all WOW around the world can be found in an exhibition in museums. And lastly, WOW could be as an entertainment tool. In the present, WOW is used to function as a medium for entertainment during free time but mostly this function in nowadays can only be found in rural areas and in villages. There are several types of WOW that exist and popular in Malaysia. Here, 
the most popular and well-known wow in Malaysia is include wow bulan. The shape of wow bulan resembles a crescent moon on the front and a semicircle on the tail. Thus, the kite looks like the moon rising in space when flown. In terms of size, wow bulan are formed to be larger than others. The typical field is 2.5 meters long by 3.5 meters high. This is to ensure that the pattern on the kite is clear and streaky. To highlight the appear of these types of wow, a selection of bright colors and larger patterns is preferred. Next, the most popular wow also includes wow jalabudi. It is a type of wow that is particularly popular in the Malaysian state of Kedah. It is a traditional Malaysian kite that has been passed on from one generation to the next. Wow Jalabudi drives its name from a leaf found in Kedah known as the Budi leaf. And the word Jala is said to have originated from the tail frames of Wow Jalabudi. When the kites are flown, the hammer near the kite's head create a medium-sized buzzing drone. Besides that, among the Bugis people of Malaysia, a sort of kite known as Wow Mara is quite popular. It is also known as Layang Layang Kipas. Wow Mara is said to be from Sulawesi, Indonesia and is played by the Bugis community. They created a wow mara to repel the birds that are at their party. Along with that, it features a design inspired by a peacock and is not restricted to a specific size. Aside from that, the kite's name wow dodo halang is also commonly popular in Malaysia, which is Terengganu is the home to these types of wow. It belongs to the category of bird kites due to the fact that it looks like an eagle. Its name is derived from the sounds produced by its bow made of thinly crafted rotans when flown. What is interesting about this wall compared to other wall is that the tail is connected with the long clothes to make a significant difference. More than that is wall can come. It is a type of kite that is popular in the Malaysian state of Kelantan. While in Kedah, this wow is known as Wow Puyo and is the official wow for the state of Kedah. The shape of Wow Kankang is similar in resembles of Wow Jalabudi but it has a different style pattern. Aside from that, Wow Seribulan is also included in the types of category kites that is popularly known in Malaysia. It is a traditional kite that has been played in Perak, Malaysia for many generations by family and all of age. Furthermore, Wow Halang is a wow that is popular and widely used in Perlis, Malaysia. It has the same appearance as the Wow Herlang, with the exceptions that it does not have a long tail. Along with that, Wow Puyo is popular type of kite in Kelantan, Malaysia. Wow Puyo is a new traditional wow for the state of Kelantan after Wow Bulan was made the national wow of Malaysia. The Wow Puyo features a tail design that is more curl than that of a wow bulan and is similar in the shape to one. On the other hand, in Selangor, wow kapal is a type of kite that is quite popular and it is the official wow for the stage of Selangor. This traditional wow kapal applies decoration using telepo and punch and paste technique while modern kapals are easier to produce because there are no traditional arts decorations motif. And for the last but not least, Wow Story Negeri is a type of wow that is popular in Negeri Semilan, Malaysia. When flown into the air, the bow of the Wow Story Negeri is said to emit a loud sound. Black pepper and gambia are the creeping plants that are used to decorate the chase of the Wow Story Negeri, which is why it is so beautiful. The uniqueness of wow will depend on its pattern and design. There are four types of motifs used in producing wow pattern design. Among them are abstract motif, floral motif, and animal motif. 
As you can see, this is an abstract motif. Abstract motifs are motifs that are difficult to interpret but are still the choice of wow makers. The mesh shoots and eyes are intertwined among the abstract motifs favored by wow makers. Next, this is the example of flower motif sketch. Flower motifs are among the motifs favored by most wow makers in Kelantan. Flower motifs have a high appeal in the terms of beauty and very synonym with the life of the Malay community. Now, let's take a look on animal motif, which are the one of the pattern and design that usually used for making a wow. Animal motifs are a motif that have their own charm. This motif is sketched at a certain point of view only. Sketches of this animal motif are sometimes interspersed with abstract colors to give a different image. The first process to make up a wall is to read the bamboo. The bamboo needs to be shaved to remove unnecessary parts such as segment and skin. In addition, the purpose is to provide balance to shape and weight of the wall's wings. Next, the bamboo that has been read is tied in section until it becomes a wall frame. The glue is used to glue the wall paper. The paper will be placed under the wall's frame. Next, the paper will be cut according to the wall's frame. After that, the paper will be glued into the frame. The last step is, the elaborately designed paper is passed into the frames. And the wall creation is done. For the game instruction of wall, wall is usually will be played by two people. One person will hold the wow and the other is called the potter will hold the rope. Apart from that, controlling the way of flying wow is important to prevent the wow from falling to the ground or to prevent the wow rope from breaking. For the technique of raising a wow at close range, this technique is suitable for small and light wow. Only a person is needed to launch this technique. Player must stand at the back of the wind direction and one hand of the player will hold the body of the wall and face it towards the wind. The other hand holds the loop of rope and the wall is really slowly until the wall rises high into the air. In addition, this traditional game should be played in appropriate and open areas such as in the fields. This game will also be played using only one string. The use of a single rope allows this wall to be easily flown and controlled in the air. The traditional craft of wow had more a part of the life of our ancestors in all kinds of the culture in Malaysia. We need to ensure that nowadays youngsters able to play the traditional craft of wow and we need to make sure that this traditional craft of wow is maintained and preserved to be passed for our cultures and heritage for the future generations.